Hi, I'm Jake Mills, and in today's video essay, I'm going to be comparing the film movements of film noir and neo-noir, and how the former has influenced the latter. To compare the two movements, I will be analyzing a scene from The Third Man, a classic film noir film from 1949, as well as a scene from Blade Runner 2049, a contemporary example of a neo-noir film from 2017. When choosing scenes to compare, I decided to choose two key scenes which revolved around a revelation in which there was a noticeable impact on the character arc, narrative, and progression of the protagonist. While assessing these films, I will be focusing on five key aspects of the technical filmmaking. Framing, lighting, use of dialogue, mise-en-scene, and iconography. Rather than defining what the movements mean, I will be focusing on their visual styles and technical features. As James Nairmore says in his article, American Film Noir, The History of an Idea, it has always been easier to recognize a film noir than to define the term. In this scene, American pulp fiction novelist Holly Martins believes he is being followed by a spy in the streets of Vienna while trying to find out how his best friend was killed. Soon after, it is revealed that it is actually his recently deceased friend, Harry Lyme, who has been following him. This leads to the huge revelation of the film, that Harry is in fact still alive and has faked his own death. This leads to an eventual chase sequence whereby Harry escapes. In terms of framing, many Dutch angle tilted shots are used to emphasize Holly's disorientation in a foreign and almost alien landscape as he is unaccustomed to society in occupied Austria. When it comes to lighting, light and shades are used to exaggerate character traits. Holly, the honorable protagonist, is lit in a bright white light, whilst the mysterious and almost menacing Harry is shrouded in the darkness of almost black shadows. Use of dialogue is pretty minimalist, as the atmosphere is mainly crafted through the soundtrack. However, the use of the line Harry. is key, as it reveals that Harry is in fact not dead, and this in turn shifts narrative focus of Holly's journey from finding out who killed Harry and why, to finding Harry and finding out how he faked his death. In terms of mise-en-scene, the scene is very minimalist, showing only empty cobblestone roads, lit up apartments with blacked out windows, and minimal diegetic lighting coming from a few street lamps. This creates a very isolated geography linking back to Holly's sense of isolation. In terms of film noir iconography, it contrasts black and white by having the protagonist, Holly, well lit under a bright street lamp, whilst having the mysterious antagonist, Harry, shrouded in literal darkness by having his face fully or partially obscured by shadows. It contains a down-on-his-luck defeatist protagonist, Holly, acting out the role of amateur detective whilst actually being an author by profession. The use of distinct shadows and silhouettes that they create are on full display here, with the mysterious Harry being either covered in dark shadows or creating large imposing silhouettes with the shadows in this particular scene. In this scene, replicant Blade Runner, Officer K, is greeted by an advertisement hologram, advertising the holographic girlfriend, Joy. In this scene, the revelation is that Joy, K's now deceased holographic girlfriend, was just a product, programmed to love and satisfy clients, and that her love for him was never real and therefore, neither was she. The framing here is quite different. Many wide shots are used to display the scope of the city landscape. However, more importantly, the wide shots demonstrate how small K is in comparison to the colossal hologram. This reflects the protagonist K's feeling of helplessness in comparison to the artificial woman. This is further emphasized by shooting K from a high angle to make him appear smaller and weaker, and having the hologram Joy being shot from a low angle to increase her large appearance and convey her immense power over K, both physically and psychologically. In terms of lighting, the use of color in the image rather than black and white allows the film to paint a more vivid environment with more colors to contrast. Instead of blacks and whites, the bright pink artificial Joy hologram contrasts greatly with the more realistic, seedy, bleak, and dark city in the background. Once again, dialogue here is kept to a minimum, focusing mainly on the significant line You look like a good Joe. Referencing the fact that Kay's girlfriend Joy had previously renamed him Joe. This line confirms the fact that Kay's Joy was the same as all Joys, simply there to fulfill the needs of their customer, with nothing unique or special about any particular model. In terms of mise-en-scene, the set and setting are both quite minimalist once again. It continues the style of contrast by having an empty, plain, dark bridge and a dark and bleak city, contrasting with the bright neon billboard of the advertisement. This empty setting links to the idea that Kay feels empty inside, without purpose. The bright lights of the hologram convey his deepest desires for love, acknowledgement, and a purpose. Some classic neo-noir iconography is also on full display here, such as the beaten down protagonist, with Kay sporting a broken nose with a bandage perhaps paying homage to the private detective Jake Giddies from the 1974 neo-noir film, Chinatown. 
The other main example of neo-noir iconography here is the contrast of light and dark. Kay's dimly lit bridge and Joy's almost blindingly bright neon billboard. To summarize, Blade Runner 2049 and neo-noir in general have clearly been influenced by the third man and film noir tropes, such as contrasting light and dark, having a morally ambiguous protagonist, using minimal dialogue, and having a minimalist mise-en-scene. However, the two movements contrast greatly in terms of their use of color and shot sizes.